Well, like the great Colonel Sanders once said, I'm too drunk to taste this chicken. This is the Leg Kick Podcast. I'm back from my hiatus. Hello, everybody. I was suffering from some head injuries. Fight is off, but I'm back here recording with you guys in studio. And, you know, Mike's over here. Uh, apparently, his parents didn't turn on the heat. It's very cold in there. He's wearing a hat <laughs> inside. Uh, his camera's also fuzzy, I'm assuming, from some kind of frost over the screen. Mike, how you doing? I'm wonderful, you know, good. The, the sun is out, you know, where I'm at. And the sun is I not did... out while you're at, Mike. The sun is set. It's 10 o'clock. <laughs> 9 o'clock. <laughs> where, where, Anyways. I where I'm at. Where, where, you know, I could be in, in a beautiful location, you know. Mike, you're in Jeremy's room. Nice try. <laughs> Anyways. This is the Light Kick Podcast. We are your combat sports, um, combat sports hub, here to talk about all things combat sports, specifically the UFC event that went on on the weekend. But specifically, so, like the ocean. Into, uh, yes, specifically the the ocean. But okay. uh, I can't. That was just awful. I can't think of anything. But anyways, uh, we had an event on the weekend. We'll be talking about that. We'll also be talking about some news, um, story time with Michael. And uh, I have no Mike's, Mike's going to be uh, he's got to go out of here quickly serving up some jollof rice at the uh, the homeless shelter. Uh, apparently, that's the only people that will actually eat jollof rice. So uh, he's got a big suppository of it and uh, he's going to be <laughs> serving it up at the homeless shelter later after this. But in the meantime, like the podcast, subscribe to the channel, share it around. We always appreciate it when you do. And uh, tell your friends about us. Tell your gram gam about us. Um, and um, without further ado, uh, shall there be a transition into the news, possibly? Uh, yep. Transition. It's gender. Let's get into the news and views of the week. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Anyways, uh, wow. What, low what do you have for us? What do you have for us? Low energy, Mike. I have an excuse. I've got a fucking brain injury. What's your excuse for being low energy? Uh, well, you know, nothing. I have nothing. I I'm just not feeling it. You know, every day I stray further and further away from God's light. Well, All that's right. good. You should get farther and farther away from God's light because God kind of sucks. All right. So. Oh, God. Like a wise Italian man once said, e Raffaella canta in casa mia. And, what does that even uh, mean? What does that even mean? E Raffaella balla in casa mia. E non mi importa niente. Think about All it. All right. All right. So, first up, I don't know how far I'm going back here, but let's say um, a Lamanda Lemos versus Jessica Andraj might gauge your interest in that. Um, very low. Really? That's one of the more yeah, interesting. You know, is a, is a legit contender at that weight class. I just don't think it's going to be that fun of a fight. You know, like. Do do I, I should I say litmus test for uh, for Lemos? Yeah, it is a litmus test, right? If she can get because the only people who beat it, it's pretty much a thing that if you're you only beat Jessica Andrade if you are the top of the top in the in a division right so if you beat jessica andrage unless she's declining severely um if you beat jessica andrage you're pretty much you know on the top of the top right what what why i like this matchup is because both of these women can crack you know mm -hmm. and lumbo has shown patience it's it's but that's my it problem could be is, um, this is my problem though with the fight is that like i feel like it's going to turn into two two strikers who know the other striker can knock him out but don't really have tools to like set the table for their big power shots so they're just kind of staying on the outside and going no you no you no you that might be the case we'll be praying for a bum rush from andraj in that case um next up uh ooh, this is going back a little bit in time i don't know if you guys announced this because i've been away but volkov versus tom aspinall did you talk about that uh, no, we haven't talked about that. Uh, uh, you guys have, have been slacking mind. in my absence. You have to keep Listen, in mind, 
we we haven't had a show in like two three weeks you know so it is clear i am the general of this podcast and you guys are but my foot soldiers uh, doing my bidding following my orders and uh, executing as i see fit and without me you're just bumping your heads into the wall what do i do what do i do uh something about jake paul jake paul <laughs> <laughs> speaking of jake paul no uh we will have some Jake Paul related news in this. Oh, segment. do we actually? So with that being said, yes, we do. Alexander Volkov, Tom Aspinall. Um, wow, talk about a matchup for Aspinall that's really, really going to, you know, test tough where fight. he's at in the position. Yeah, tough, tough, fight. tough fight. Especially Aspinall being a shorter, smaller um, heavyweight. Uh, Volkov is not just lanky, but he's thick and, you know, in my estimation, he'll be a difficult man for Aspinall to wrestle. So I'm I'm interested to see what he he'll be. Accomplish. Give it a space. With that being said, next up, 145 uh, matchup. Dan Hooker going back down to 145, taking on. Um, the heck is this guy's name? Our Arnold Allen. Like you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Like, can we get a false check? Oh, I'm, I'm, what happened? Where am how, I? How many beats it, per minute are you at? <laughs> oh, can you, can you see me? Can you see me? Yeah, I can see you. I can see you. I just, your, your energy. Do I need to bring out the defibrillator? Oh God. No, wait, I'm, I'm here. Like, I'm, I'm, I thought you were going to keep going with the Arnold Allen. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing you. So. No, I know. I, I'm just saying, am I the one with the brain injury here? Like. No, I'm 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 out. Okay. Like, I'm, okay. Uh so with Arnold Allen, this is probably his bounce back matchup after. No, actually. Um when did Arnold Allen lose? No, that's the, sorry. See, I always get confused with Arnold Allen and Brendan Allen. So that's on me. But Arnold Allen my man. Yeah. Arnold Allen, I know who definitely a top prospect in the uh featherweight division. Mm-hmm. Um it's going to be interesting, you know, with Arnold Allen, like where he goes from here. And I think this is a good matchup for him just to kind of see. This is this is what I like to call the walk before you can run um, fights, right? You, you fight someone who's like the gatekeeper of the top 15, and then you fight someone who's the gatekeeper of like the top 10, and then you fight the ga- like the, the actual contenders, you know? Are you referring to Dan Hooker as a gatekeeper? Well, this is the thing, right? Um, kind of, kind of not because it. Dan Hooker is a very good fighter. This is I'm not trying to say he's not, but there is a we've seen there's a ceiling for him in terms of the skills he brings to the table, and so well, let's see how he does right? at 45. Because I mean, I doubt that he's going to encounter um, grab to the extent of, uh, you know, our boy Islam Makachev at one fifty at uh, one forty five. So we'll see. His, his length and height might be able to um, might be able to do him well at the weight class, and not exactly against someone that's going to try and swarm him like a Michael Chandler. You know, another tall, long, rangy striker in Arnold Allen, someone who favors kicking. It could be interesting. Mm-hmm. Right, Dan Hooker is what uh, five eleven, six feet, and Arnold Allen's like yeah. Five- Five nine, five ten, somewhere around there. So something you know, like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, it's just my point is, is that like Dan Hooker. I think. Well, for Dan Hooker, this is also a litmus test matchup too. If you could be Arnold Allen, then you're definitely, you definitely belong in the, in that like in the mix, right? This is like a nice tune up for him if he can get past them. But for Arnold Allen, I think this is the because you know his last fights were, um, Gilbert Melendez, Nick Lentz, and Sadiq Yusuf. So. Good fighters, but not, you know, definitely not cream of the crop or top 10. Right. You know, yeah. so t- to me, this is one of those, if you can beat Dan Hooker, now we can say your name within the Josh Emmett's, uh, Ige's, um, yeah. Barbosa's of the world. Exactly. Right. Um, but, and, and that's like, so that's like around five to 10. You get what I'm saying? And Dan Hooker has an opportunity to announce himself as a legitimate contender at 45 as well. Um, exactly. Next up, 
Vicente Luque versus Bilal Muhammad rematch booked I like for this. April I like 16th. This. I like this too. Two men who, um, you know, legitimately, I think you could give, give either of them a title shot at this point. But um, Kamaru fighting about once or twice a year. So in the meantime, we're going to have to see who it is. I like this as a contender matchup, to be honest. Yeah. Um, definitely the first time they fought two, uh, two different fighters, um, Bil- um, Bilal Muhammad. Um, didn't figure himself out yet, and uh, Vicente Luque was a little more, uh, um, you know, brawl and high guard oriented. Um, still kind of is to an extent, but definitely has shown a lot more tools, um, and a lot more craft in his striking and his grappling than previously thought. Um, you know, you made the point that he's always had a great darts, but. You, you you have we hadn't seen it until until recently. Um, this for me is very much one of those immovable object versus unstoppable force matchups where uh, Bilal is going to keep um, wave after wave after wave attempting to pressure and take down and um, batter Vicente Luque and Vicente is going to be you know standing firm, keeping his ground, throwing that mm-hmm. cross ki- cross counter left hook, and uh, you know it's an interesting matchup. It's an interesting matchup, and there's certain. Um, we'll see how he stands up to the wrestling pressure. I know, obviously, last time he knocked out Bilal Muhammad, but uh, Charles Oliver, Justin Gaethje for set for May seventh. Yeah, no, that's that's. Inevitable. I'm excited. Yeah, that's inevitable. Um, you know, I, it's gonna be. I think th- if Charles Oliveira beats him, because like the hardcores respect him. But when does the mainstream start respecting him? When he beats uh, Justin Gaethje, Conor McGregor. You think it's Conor McGregor? No, I, I think I think uh, to be honest, I think Gaethje is a respectable name to have on that resume. Yeah, I think he's but, not as mainstream as Conor, but uh, I think I don't know. I think the main, if anything, people are moving on from Conor at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know it, it. You know, I just I uh, every time Charles Oliveira fights like someone in the top five we always think he's the underdog like i had i had him winning against chandler like but i did i could see a world where people picked chandler and as a result he was the underdog um on the betting lines and he was the underdog on the betting lines against poirier right and i assume he's gonna open up as a underdog on the betting lines against gaichi so it's like at what point is he going to be considered by the masses an established champion, right? Is right. this the matchup? Maybe. And if this, yeah, so th- I guess this is the prove-it matchup for Charles Oliveira, right? And uh, middleweight contenders, Andre Muniz versus Uriah Hall. I like that. Muniz first-round submission. Uh, Joe Lozon, Donald Cerrone. When did that take? When was that announced? Jesus. Joe Lozon, first-round knockout. Ryan Bader, check Congo, too. I'm. I really hope Chet Congo can pull this off. Ryan Bader is pussy. <laughs> you know, um, never he friend of the show, Chet Congo. Uh, I I hope he can pull it off because he was fig- he figured some things out uh, between uh, last matchup, last time they faced, and this one uh, came off came off a pretty impressive win against Minkoff. Um, I still think he beat Timothy Johnson, uh, but well, you know, it is what it is on that one. And I think, yeah, this is going to be a pretty good, good fight. And I'm pulling for Chick Congo. Next up, Jeremy Stevens signs with PFL. I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at this one. Um, you know, get some checks on the way down, and you know, maybe you can find some favorable matchups. Uh, but you're, but the thing about and the thing about PFL, it's not like, uh, you know hate to say it, Eagle FC or something like that, where you're going to, they're, they're going to throw you a scrub or they're going to, they're putting you in a job match, right? You're, you're getting some names who of guys who are hungry. So you're still going to have to come prepared, but definitely still not at the level of the UFC as of in their journey, right? They're, they're on the journey. Um, aside from like the Ray Coopers, I think like Ray Cooper could fight in the UFC tomorrow. Um, you know, there's a couple other guys, but I think this is a good, you know, um, landing spot for Jeremy Stevens. Alexander Gustafson back against Ben Rothwell. Oh yeah, he's back at heavy. He's going to be fighting heavyweight more often. Uh 
You know, wait, who did he face last time where, like, he got taken down in the, inside a minute? Was it Fabrizio? Yeah, he yeah. lost to Werdoop. You know, it's Ben Rothwell's striking's interesting. I hate the way he fights, I'll be honest, but uh, there's a method to madness. Could that weirdness um, throw off Alexander Gustafson, who has been out of the case for a while? Well, r- remains to be seen. Okay. Um, Jake Paul makes a music video about Dana White. <sighs> Next, please. Uh, <laughs> Mike Tyson out of his matchup with Jake Paul. What the? Okay. Um, I'm not. I'm serious. No, no. I heard. I I, I heard something like that. Um, was it Wasn't about enough money? money? Yeah, yeah, it was. It was about money. Um, which I. I think really does take some wind out of the sails of the uh, Jake Paul, like paying the fighters hype, you know? Um, but then again, boxers historically get paid more and are asking for more. So maybe that there's something else to it. You ready for your Romero announcement? I'm always ready for your Romero announcement. He'll be fighting Melvin Manhoff. I'm never ready for your Romero announcement. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Um, two 40 year olds, although Two different kind of 40, if I would say. Well, um, two of the scariest human beings in my estimation. Uh, they'll be the co-main event of Bellator Pauhi. But my thing about M- Melvin Manhoof is he hasn't been scary to me in like 10 years, you know? Um, I'm going to uh, call up Melvin and tell him you said that. No, he would kick my ass, but that's <laughs> not the point. I'm talking about like other like, you know. Very, 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 very good fighters, you know? Mike, I think you're a very, very, very good fighter. Why don't we set up that matchup between you and Melvin Matinoff? No, because he kicked my ass. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you say no. he's a bitch ass with no ground game? Oh, God. Oh, God. Don't do I that. I swear <laughs> something like that came out of your mouth. You said Melvin. I have it written down here. Melvin Matinoff is a bitch ass N-word and... I will beat him up worse than I did to um, uh, oh fuck, what was the name of that uh, that heavyweight boxer that you beat up, Mike? <laughs> was that uh, something something about a Lewis? Uh, forget about it. Um, you know, I legitimately I legitimately thought you forgot for a second. Uh, <laughs> like the, the running joke, I was like, oh wow, he actually forgot the name of the boxer uh, that he keeps bringing. Um, so, um, but. But yeah, one go more ahead, go ahead. heavyweight announcement. Curtis Blades, Chris Dawkins. I like that one. Um, I don't like it for Dawkins. I, I don't like it for Dawkins. I, I think Dawkins is going to get ragdolled, to be honest with you. But, like, I... Curtis Blades is of, going to be spoiler in this division for uh, up-and-coming contenders. Oh, yeah. And, and the thing about uh, Curtis Blades is, I thought he did a wonderful job against Derek Lewis before he didn't. Um, you know? Yeah. I, I think Curtis Blades is it, there's he proposes a lot of interesting tools just for whatever reason he can't seem to get over the hump, um, and so against Chris Dacus, I I picture you never know though right like what if Chris Dacus comes in there opens a can of whoop ass with the boxing and then and 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 you never know what Curtis Blades' chin is like post uh, knockout to Derek Lewis right so hey you never know right. Yeah. And uh, finally, um, William Knight misses weight by 12 pounds just exclusively to piss off Michael Acevo. You got to... Oh, wait. Make the damn weed. Stay on uh, the damn weed. Um, um, yeah, y- the... This one's interesting. Yeah, I know. This one's interesting because he he seems to make weight okay all the time. You know, up until this time around, I don't remember or recall him missing weight. So for him to miss weight here, something went on in the camp, you know. And I'm becoming more and more sympathetic to the guys who, like, let's say get, like, a leg injury, can't cut weight, and... Are you just sympathetic to him because he's a stocky, uh, wide fighter at a higher weight class than he's supposed to be? Um, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I don't know, Mike. 
<laughs> Seems to be a little bias here. Is he Ghanaian? What's what's the bias? He's a Ghanaian descendant, maybe. I don't know. Um, but yeah, like no, it's just I'm I'm more sympathetic because it's because with the talkable fighter pay, it's it's really easy from seeing from my point of vantage point of oh you're injured you can't make weight just call. Meanwhile, like that's one of your three paydays a year, and you're getting paid what fifty k to show, fifty k to win, and maybe if you're lucky, a fifty k bonus, right? Well, Mike showing some empathy towards fighters that miss weight. I don't believe. No, like, listen, if it was Paulo Costa, like, if it was the Paulo Costa thing where he just didn't bother, like, don't get me wrong, I'd chew him out. But my point being is that if, let's say, he had some sort of injury, like, you know, a knee injury, and he couldn't, because he, he did get his ass kicked in the fight against, um, was it Grisham? Um, Maxim Grisham, remember. yeah. Yeah, so he did get his ass kicked. It wasn't, like, it wasn't close. So my point being that there, if there was something up in his camp, Right. Or like, you know, if it was un straight unprofessionalism, then it's straight unprofessionalism. But if there was something wrong in his camp, it's not like, you know, he's rolling in the in the Benjamins to then call and say, hey, I'm injured. I'm not my best. I'm going to pull out. Right. And that be an easy decision. Right. He's he has to go back to the drawing board again, has to spend all that money on camp and can't recoup it with fighting. Right. Yeah, it is an unfortunate situation. I just wonder why suddenly you become empathetic. I don't understand. Um, anyways, this does us for news. Those were the announcements that were. Time to get into the fights of this past weekend. Can I get a transgender? Oh, God. Transition. <laughs> ding, ding. So apparently Mike doesn't like transgender people either. Um, you no, know we don't talk about those people here. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> don't cancel me. I love I love the community. Uh, All right. Anyways, um, we are going to talk about the fights that were. Discuss a couple of them. I think maybe let's get into Adesanya Whitaker. Uh, close fight. Yeah. I was right in my estimation. I predicted Adesanya would win. I predicted that in order for Whitaker to have a chance, he was going to have to be gritty, push through those moments of distress, utilize his wrestling, and just bring out a full and rounded skill set. And uh, all of that happened. It was a com competitive fight, and these two men are sitting alone at the top of the division. Yeah, no, they're head and shoulders above the rest. Like, I can't think of anybody who's better unless, you know, of course there's always the unless someone shoots to the moon like a Hamza Shemaev or whatever, but... Uh, these these two are definitely they proved it again last night. Like it's it's not just the the brute force or you know they have one overwhelming skill. It it's the mind, the headiness, right? Um, Israel Asanya with the feints and the consistent like um work of going to the legs to then attack upstairs, and then there's Robert Whitaker going to fight behind the jab and attacking the feints and. And timing Izzy while he's square, you know, and then and then there's the takedowns, and then Izzy using the Kimura to to evade to um, break pressure. So there was a lot of good things in this fight. Um, a little bit of controversy. There's some people who think Robert Whitaker won. There's some uh. who think there's some who think Izzy won. I'm not. Mad. I would honestly, honestly, while I think Izzy won the fight, like I truly in my heart do. Um, I think he won the first three rounds. Every round besides the first was close. The first and fifth was close enough to me where I was like, I can I can see a world where, like for example, uh, Sal Diamato would would <laughs> give Robert Whitaker some of those rounds, right? So, um, it, it was a good fight. I, I enjoyed it. It was a uh, it was a fighter's fight, right? Um, in the sense that you saw a lot of good tools, a lot of good tactics. And a lot of smart, heady plays out there. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, we saw certain strength brought out for each fighter. Whitaker making use of the blitz, but also angling off when, um, you know, Adis before Adesanya had the opportunity to counter at a lot of points. That's not where he got caught, which is where he got caught a lot of times in the, the first fight. Um, 
using his left hand well to find out Asanya in those those blitzes with jabs with left hooks. Uh, I would have liked to have seen him target the body, maybe a right straight to the body after that, or kicking the legs. Uh, where he did kick the legs, but at the end of the blitzes more. I would have liked to have seen. Um, you know, I gotta but, say, uh, Robert Whitaker covers a lot of distance with his jab. Like he a does. lot. He does. Yeah, he moves his feet quite well and quite quickly. Um, Adesanya, on the other hand, favoring the legs, targeting the legs with frequency, um, targeting the body with that front kick, managed to drop Whitaker in that early going with that right hand. And personally, I thought that was done, but good job of Whitaker recovering. Um, had excellent use of the side kick, using it to set up the takedown. Um, just a well-rounded and interesting fight with adjustments back and forth. I had the second and fifth, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, for Whitaker, and the rest for Adesanya, just based on the cumulative damage with the legs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, interesting. I had I had the first three for Adesanya. I thought the fourth round was close, but I gave it to Whitaker just because he did take the back. Um, briefly, mm. briefly, but I, I did give it to Whitaker on that one. And the fifth, I had Whitaker running away. Um, you know, but I didn't, it wasn't like it was like the first round where he got Izzy got dropped or whatever um but i think one of the interesting things was is that Whitaker started to figure izzy out um so to me a third fight would be compelling just to see if izzy sees that fight goes to the drawing board um on Whitaker and comes up with something else to counter what Whitaker was doing in that fight right yeah, I mean, a third fight would definitely be interesting. Uh, I think there's other contenders waiting in the wings, not many, but I am intrigued for a third fight and to see what these gentlemen can do. I think they have a compelling fight each and every time, right? Mm-hmm. First one being a blowout, second one being a very competitive back and forth. And despite Whitaker being 0-2 in this ma- these matchups, I think he might find his way to a title shot if he can continue beating back these young contenders. But um, yeah, yeah, very good fight. Very yeah. good fight. I mean, there is one contender. Um, I, we're not. We're going to talk about him later in the, in the, uh, I guess later in the podcast. But um, I just think that these two are head and shoulders above the rest. Like it's not, and that's the thing. It's just the craft that these two use in their, in their their game, and they bring out the 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 smarts out of each other. You know what I'm saying? Um, even Whitaker versus Darren Till, it was the same kind of thing where it's like they bring out the smarts like in each other every once in a while. You're going to see a style that happens like that. Yeah, and they force each other to adapt to those, uh, you know, to elevate each other's game to that next level. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and so, like, the sidekick into the takedown, um, I've drilled it before. I've never found an application for it. And and to see it like done in a fight was like wow you know yeah 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 um and yeah like even even like the switch the the feint with the head um with the left uh kick into the straight right switch that uh what is he used in the round one to knock uh Whitaker down um that was that was nice there was there was like there there was a lot of good things and a lot of good tools and I think um to me, that's just the, there's just a level of polish in those two's game that you're not seeing, at least on the feet, um, with the rest of the division. Um, yeah, it, polish and thoughtfulness for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, my question though is, where does Wicker go from here though? Like, you know, he because he's obviously got to go back down the mountain and win a couple matchups, but he's beaten everyone. He's being Cannoneer. He's being Brunson, uh, he's being Till, he's beating, you know, like Gaslam, although Gaslam's going to Walter Waite now, right? So oh, is he? I didn't know that. I heard, I heard something like that. I don't know if that's, like, if it's confirmed, confirmed, but. Yeah, and recently he's beaten them as well. Like, this is all in recent memory. Um, yeah. It's difficult to say, like, where does he go from here? Because any fight that he has at this point is going to be a rematch. The man's run the gauntlet in the division. Uh, in yeah. many ways, he's that fighter turning aside content- interesting contenders for Adesanya, right? So we will see. We will see. Yeah. I mean, like, do you give him, like, Muniz? Like, do you, what, do you, what do you do? You see, know? Muniz like, is a bit young, especially because he's supposed to face Uriah Hall soon. Um, do you give him Strickland? Like, I know Strickland's just made into the top five. You know, like, like that's the thing. A Strickland like, matchup could be compelling. But then again, like, here's the problem as well. 
we are parched for contenders for Adesanya at this moment. And it's times like these where I think it's like uh, in the middle of Anderson Silva's reign, where it's like, no, just don't give these guys to Bisping. Don't give these guys to like, you know, let them let them have their shot at the title. Because we're stood up for contenders and maybe uh, with less fights um, available for analysis and maybe something weird in their style, they can force out Asanya to adapt or they can bring something interesting out of a style. But I think your Strickland's, your Muniz's, you might be rushing them to a title perhaps a little earlier than they're ready for in this case. Because mm-hmm. Whitaker's just going to, I think, kill them off, to be honest. I wasn't super impressed by the last performance by Strickland. I thought he demonstrated a good use of the job, but not much more. Um not bad defense either. Like I've always said, remember when I always used to say like Strickland's the the biggest mirage in the middleweight division? And my point was always he acts like this brawler savage, but he really ain't. Like there's Yeah. You know, it, 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 but I think defensively there's something interesting about having a good boxing defense from your head that could give Izzy issues. But Izzy we we just saw Izzy isn't doesn't discriminate in terms of where he de- deals his damage and he will kick your legs a lot. Yeah, precisely. So, um, whereas Muniz, I, I, I just, I don't know what his striking is like, and we've seen, you got to mix it up. You got to mix it up. So nine tenths of the battle is just getting to Adesanya. Yeah. And right. Once you're there, it's, it's no breeze. Um, people mentioning Chamayev, that's way too early. Yeah, you had a friend <sighs> saying, friend, a friend of the podcast saying that Shamaya is going to be the one to beat us out of Sonya. Like, I don't know, but let's let's show a bit of uh, restraint. Yeah. yeah, restraint. Let's, let's cool it. You know, I, I I'd like to see Hamza Shamaya face somebody though. Like, I let the kid go. Like I've been saying, let the kid go. Let him, let him face everybody, whoever he wants. If he's down, let's do it. You know, you like want Hamza burns? said. Kill everybody, kill everybody, I kill everybody, brother. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I heard, <laughs> you know what I heard? It was a funny what? meme. There was a meme of uh, Hamza Shemaev, and he's evil Habib, and Ian Gary is like, good Connor. Good, nice God. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> Classic. Uh, anyway. So, uh, next, next up. Uh, so, if my MMA math checks out, and it usually does. Tai Tuivasa just became the heavyweight champion. Stop, stop this. <laughs> no, I mean, think about it. Think about it. Uh, Derek Lewis beat Francis Ngannou, and therefore, because he beat Tai Tuivasa, is that going to be everybody? Is is like because of like one fight where mentally Ngannou wasn't like prepared or there? Well, if Magumba wasn't prepared, maybe it's because he had uh, Larrick Dewis swinging leather in his face, you know? Like, Larrick Dewis. Let's be real. Magumba was not ready for Larrick Dewis that night. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyways. Uh, yeah, no, that was that was, uh, that was was a fun fight. You know, I enjoyed it for what it was. Like, I, I you know... Tai Tuvasa came out and it looked like he was going to do what Mark Hunt did to Derek Lewis. His corner was even saying, Mark Hunt, Mark Hunt game plan. Yeah. Stick to the Mark Hunt game plan. And he was doing a lot of that. Uh, a lot of shoulder fainting into leg kicks. Um, he, ha- he, he had that moment where he shoulder fainted, threw the fake leg kick, ducked under the return of Derek Lewis and pushed him into the clinch. That was nice. A um, lot of time in the clinch, a lot of kneeing the legs. Um, and... Uh, good use of elbows. I think, first of all, Derek Lewis has been showing lately what he showed in a lot of his earlier career, and that's that he's um, a dangerous ground and pounder and a man that if he can get you into clinch range, like it doesn't take much for him to shut your lights off. So how good is the, that chin on uh, yeah. Ty? Yeah, no, he took a lot of big shots. And I think that's part of the why um, it was the beginning of the end for Derek Lewis, because Derek Lewis was trying to shut him out. With the with uh, the ground and pound, first of all, um, you know, the inside trip. A lot of people talk about with Derek Lewis, uh, he, probably the best inside trip in the heavyweight division. Um, but he also landed a pretty nice single leg, if I if memory serves me right. Um, so, you know, a couple to Derek Lewis's credit, it's not like Derek Lewis, 
you know, was typical like backup, backup, take a leg kick and take a leg kick that was really hard to the calf, cover up and and that and throw one shot at a time. But at the same time, Tag Tuvasa did a lot of good work with the shoulder feint, um, backed up Derek Lewis to the fence, you know, smothered Derek Lewis, took the shots he needed to take, and uh, landed some really sickening elbows in tight. Yeah, uh, very good at those posting elbows. I'm surprised a lot of more people aren't throwing them, but um, just absolutely face planted Derek Lewis. Just a very, very, very scary KO. And, you know, often we're accustomed to seeing uh, late stoppage against Derek Lewis, late, late, late as in like in the fourth round or so, when he's just, it, it almost seems to me as if he's too frustrated to continue and um, just not having a lot of success and looking for a way out. But this was just absolutely starching Derek Lewis in a way that, I, in recent memory, I can't really, I can't really yeah. remember. I mean, I know he was knocked out by um, Sean Jordan back in the day, but yeah, yeah, man, yeah, no, it was it, like face plant KO, like how you you can't get any better than that, right? Um, you know, I I and and I mean, you'd like to see again. Everyone's gonna say a hey, him versus Alexi Olenek. Uh, you know, see, uh, Tai Tuvasa, I'm referring to. Like, and, and see why in the world would you want to see that? Exactly. My point being is that, like, who wants to wrestler. see that, Mike? No one. But my point being that, like, if you give Tai Tuvasa a wrestler, uh, I think Alexia Linux a wrestler, a grappler. He's a uh, weird Ezekiel choke guy. Grappler, right? You give, like, my point he's being the, is that he's that old give, Russian guy in the corner of the gym practicing techniques that uh, nobody has has done since uh, the Soviet Union was still a thing. <laughs> wow, my, Sherdog has uh, Taito Ivasa ranked fourth right that's now. That's my thing, right? Like, he, he's he, they've given him it, it, a five-fight win streak, starching everybody, uh, but he's Kill got everybody. In, he's got in some, um, I wouldn't say favorable matchups because Derek Lewis is a tough matchup, right? Um Struve, Harry Struve. Hunsucker, Greg Hardy, Augusto Sakai. Yeah. Yeah, like Sakai, Sakai, I get, like, has been hilariously knocked out a lot lately. But, like, Sakai before was, was you know, opposing a, a threat to a, some uh, to a lot of fighters in this division. So, yeah, no, it, it, what I'm trying to say is, like, you wonder what, what Tui Vasa could do against someone who will be going for takedowns. But, you know, great story, right? Like. Wins three straight, loses three straight, comes back and wins five straight. Um, yeah, good story. Where's the love for my boy Alexander Romanov, though? But anyways, very good. And I think he's the man to unseat Francis Ngannou. And if MMA math has told us anything, he already has unseated Francis Ngannou. So. Oh, God. Good Can on. you imagine? Can you imagine they fight and... Uh, so he also starches him? Maybe. Yeah, just in the round. You never know, right? Like... What what if Tuivasa has more power than we think, and Francis Ngannou just can't take a shot from Tuivasa, right? Like, maybe, maybe I've heard, uh, you know, I've heard people from Africa tend not to have very uh, very solid chins. Hey, that's racist. <laughs> Anyways, uh, moving on. Um, I'm gonna be good for a couple more of these. We've got. Um, oh, yeah, oh, Cannonier versus Brunson. Yeah, Blonde Brunson looking good, doing his usual thing, extending too far and left straights, and okay. um, taking Cannonier down repeatedly and almost putting on a clinic on the ground. Uh, he had that beautiful, like, elevation single leg where, you know, you hike up the leg and just drive your opponent back. Um, yeah, did did some good work in this fight. Um, had a rear naked show. Drop Cannonier, too. Dropped Kenanier, had a rear naked choke as well towards the end of the first round, but then the second came and um, Kenanier found his way back into the fight. You want to talk us through this one? Yeah, so um, first round looked good for Derek uh, Derek Brunson. Um, and I Brunson think... Brunson Lewis? Yeah, I was about to say Lewis. Or Derek uh, Derek? Derek Derek. Uh, nearly, nearly came up. You should let me just walk, walk past it, brother. No, um... But yeah, first round for Derek Brunson was really um, interesting because there's there's advantages and disadvantages to doing something wrong, 
one person, one person told me. And the, the advantage to having your chin way up in the air and overextending on your left straight is your left straight is about a foot longer than it's supposed to be. And <laughs> because of that, um, it, 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 was kind of, I, I, I wouldn't say shell shocked, but definitely startled mm-hmm. by how the frequency of how much he was getting got because the range just wasn't there. But I think Kanye made a great adjustment by, I wouldn't necessarily say he's switching his feet, but he squares up his stance, gets on the inside of Derek Lewis's, Derek Lewis, Derek Brunson's um, left straight with a nice right hook um, on the inside of that. And Derek Brunson was just not the same fighter as soon as that right hook landed. And, and in my opinion, that was the beginning of the end. Um, sorry, go ahead. No, good fight. Good fight. Yeah. Uh, keep keep going, Mike. No, I, and and I think, um, d- you know, Derek Brunson is 38, but he has nothing to be ashamed of if he decides to call it a career. I, I know he was taught he was contemplating retirement. Oh, was um, he? He was contemplating retirement pre pre uh, before this fight. Um, and I think I think he did some admirable things. I really you mentioned a single leg. I enjoy that was a really nice single leg. Um, I really like the pressure of just like consistently going for the takedowns over and over again. I think that that's a great tool to use against Kanyer because it, it just it, it you know, I think against Kanyer who can hit like a, a truck. One of the things that you should be doing is throwing off his timing of when he should be defending takedowns and when he should be punching. And and getting him thinking is probably a good way to offset that power. Um, I thought the left straight was working early, um, as ugly as it is. Um, you know, use of the long guard a couple points uh, to kind of um, keep uh, Jerry, Jerry Kanier at, at bay, I thought was interesting. But yeah, again, if you get clipped with the right hook under the top, as soon as you got clipped with the right hook on the inside, um, Derek Brunson all of a sudden looked slow, was flat footed, looked tired, um, and just wasn't in there. You could tell his eyes were glazed over and just was not. I, I only remember one other instance of that in recent memory. Do you remember when Korean Zombie was facing Brian Ortega and he got hit with a spinning back elbow? And then Korean Zombie just like, didn't look himself. Yeah, was uh, yeah, I remember that one shot that kind of changed the course of the fight in that way. Yeah, so to me, it, it, I'm not saying oh, it was as simple as getting caught. No, Kanye did something. Kanye made an adjustment and and got uh, Derek Brunson with that adjustment, and then the finish was was brutal as hell. Uh, they tried to to throw the towel in before. Um, you know, Derek I Br- saw that. Yeah, yeah. They they tried, and 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 I appreciate that. Like, you know, it, it was to it was to no avail, but they they you know that's that's a corner that cares about their fighter. Yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate that as well. We need to see more of that. And um, I mean, uh, Blonde Brunson, the legendary streak of Blonde Blonde Brunson has come to the end. But uh, Crystal Cannoneer is now. Uh, <laughs> you know, the man loves his crystals. Uh, it's too bad that we won't be able to see a high caliber wrestler make it all the way to Israel Adesanya in this way, especially mm-hmm. seeing as he uh, was starting to put a rounded game together. But whether he retires or stick with the sports, thank you for a great career. He was on a great run and, um, you know, turned aside quite a few promising contenders in the division. So, yeah. Um, because of my concussion, I was like half watching a lot of these fights. So I didn't. <laughs> actually see the hernandez moicano one i had to take a nap at that point um i'll walk it i'll walk you through it i'll walk you through it um basically hernandez looked good he looked fast um light kick was working for him hits a, a couple good straights but moicano started to figure out the timing to uh i it, it was either the jab or the right straight but he had a couple answers to it one was the uppercut um the other was the left hook and so the beginning of the end for hernandez was when moicano lands this beautiful slip uppercut left hook that gets uh hernandez dazed um takes the back takes him down takes the back and uh sinks in that rear naked choke 
sorry, reverses a takedown from Hernandez, takes his back, and gets a Renee choke. Moicano quietly creeping up in this division with a very, very different approach to the game than he had before. A lot of emphasis on wrestling, on takedowns, on um, just being better at jiu-jitsu than his opponents, and uh, I am liking this. Yeah, I think, you know, jiu-jitsu is slowly making a comeback because, you know, for a little while it was turning, the UFC was basically turning into kickboxing with maybe an in, inch of takedowns. and it's turning into Sancho. Yeah, it was turning into Sancho, basically. And, you know, there, there is a, I like it. I like the evolution of it. <laughs> and I understand why that was taking place, you know, movement and, and boxing-oriented uh, striking uh, with the odd calf kick every once in a while. And the and the enforcement of the rules. Let's be honest. Separation of clinches and stand ups as well. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Like Mark Gar- Mark ah, Mark Goddard looking at you. Uh, you know, it's uh, a Big fight, Dan Kabaru. Big Dan. Uh, I love him. You know, homeboy. But you know, he he likes to break up uh, clinches a little early, in my opinion. And. And yeah, like I think, um, but my point being is that we're seeing jujitsu start to um, really start to make its way known. And I think one of the reasons why it's doing that is that guys are really mixing in good Muay Thai um, into ju- into exchanges where you can, once you get hold of somebody, you know a move that can, can do some damage, right? Yeah. And um, finally, I think I'm going to have to call it quits after this one. But- of course. Bobby Green, hack pressed. Um, loved it. Loved it. Bobby yeah, great Green. fight for you guys. Oh. Laughed at me. You guys laughed in my face when I said Bobby Green was going to present problems for Fizayev, and he did. Bobby Green is a high level mixed martial artist. Don't let we, Mike we and them. I know. I believed in Bobby Green since day one. And you know what? You it, and David and Jeremy, you laughed at me. You pointed and you laughed. And Mr. Bobby Green, if you decide to come on our show, just know you got a friend in me. You in, got a friend in me. In fairness, it was Don't not. Don't trust Michael and Jeremy. <laughs> you're, 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 you're polarizing my argument. That's not, well, not my argument. My, my, my thoughts on Bobby Green. It was never the defense. David literally laughed at me. He did. He I did said, laugh at you. He was, was like, like huh, Bobby Green, hilarious. He was like, what? Yeah. Um. <laughs> Bobby I, Green, you got a friend in me. <laughs> Don't trust Mike and Jeremy. But you know what, though? has There's definitely a change in Bobby Green and the approach he's taken. No? Is that – because my whole thing with Bobby Green was – sorry, I just – sorry for that noise, everybody. But my whole thing in Bobby Green was he just doesn't do enough, you know? He just doesn't do enough. And he certainly upped his output. He was making uh, making them miss, and now he's making them pay for it. And uh, I am very much liking this new iteration of Bobby Green. Just a lot of things straight down the middle with front kicks, with one twos, two ones. Just uh, he's really, really putting the volume on these guys. And hack pressed. You could tell he was really frustrated with the speed of Bobby Green because um, sometimes you'll see when. Somebody can't confidently react to uh, the punches in a meaningful way as far as slips or, you know, like, you know, meaningful planned defense to build off of. They kind of just keep a high guard up and uh, try to feel when the punches land and then respond to it. And he was kind of relying on that, really not able to put up much of a a measured defense. Um, And speed will do that to you. Speed will do that to you. And... Bobby Green with the shoulder roll, just allowing these shots to roll off his guard and then coming back with responses. Beautiful work. Yeah. No, it was it was a good it, Bobby Green, um, late career resurgence a little bit, you know. Um, Knocking out Ally Quinta before this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, gave Fizzy of a tough time. Um, he there was another there was another prospect he he gave a tough time to um, whose name is escaping me. Um, so. Yeah, good on Bobby Green. Um, you know, I like to see him do use more of this straight hitting uh, to to offset his inability to to throw stuff. You know, so yeah. The- no, yeah, exactly, exactly. Real quickly, I'll just run down some of these fights before. Um, very quickly before we get out of here, mm-hmm. Andre Olovsky turning back the clock, beating yet another heavyweight by split decision. 
my boy, doing the damn thing. Roxanne Modafferi in her re, uh, retirement fight against Casey O'Neill. Um, Thanks for the memories. Thanks for the memories. Thank you for the memories. Excellent, uh, excellent career from uh, you know someone who really made the most of what they've got and uh, a fellow nerd. Um, Kyler Phillips had an entertaining beating over Marcelo Rojo. Lots of fun. Excellent triangle armbar from guard. Carlos Olberg defeating Fabio Charant in a lackluster but measured performance. And the rest of this I didn't really see. But, Mike, you were very high on Blood Diamond. What happened? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Blood Diamond. The Blood Diamond. I, I, don't, I don't know. Well, I know what happened. He, he got caught in a clinch exchange, and then after it was regged all the time. But, yeah, no, I thought Blood Diamond was going to come out here, smack the legs up, or just tear uh, – Poor Jeremiah Wells' legs apart. Hit him with something upstairs, um, and, and then call it a call it a day. Um, but you know that's what happens when Jeremiah Wells tricks him into hitting a, a pole, and then <laughs> you know it was it was an inter- it was actually pretty funny. But you know it is good. Congrats to Jeremiah Wells because you know I at least picked him to to get to to get destroyed and he did it so good on him the blue diamond um anyways i think this does us um we have been the light kick podcast in the past and we continue to do so um Mike, to play us out. What is what is that? Oh yeah. Oh, you're not. Th- is the concussion really that bad? You're not gonna threaten the children. Oh uh, my okay. god. Fuck them uh, kids. Um, <laughs> ladies, I haven't threatened the children in a while. Ladies and gentlemen, send your firstborns to the Light Kick podcast, and um, we will uh, sit them down in front of the TV screen like the little Vigo treatment in Clockwork Orange and force them to watch hours of our content, then we'll send them back to you as uh, drones programmed to invade the world and spread the leg kick to every phone, computer screen, and television. Um, share, subscribe, tell your friends about it, like the podcast, comment hearts below, and, uh, you know, Bobby Green, just remember when you come on the show, it was me who was a friend to the beginning. <laughs> Mike, play us out. Now, what does that mean? Well, in this crazy mixed up world where apparently I'm not a friend of Bobby Green, uh, just remember, you got three things. You got life, you got family, and straight hitting from Bobby Green. (laughs) This podcast. Later, everybody.